Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Jack's Mechanics. Today we're looking at a Toyota Hi Ace 2008 model TRH201. It's running the 2.7 litre petrol engine. Uh, it's got a check engine light. It has had a check engine light actually uh, on and off for the past couple of years with the air pump and the air pump valve. Um, that valve, um, which we diagnosed previously, um, was stuck open and that allowed condensation and exhaust gases into the pump, rusted out and seized the pump. So he's back again um, for another issue. Uh, he thought it was the same issue um, actually after the last time that it was in here. He said the engine light came on the day after, but that's been nearly a year, um, but he doesn't do much driving in it. So I've scanned it, full disclosure, scanned it, and I've spent literally two minutes on it so p0136 o2 sensor bank one sensor two circuit um so we'll go back and the other the time that i spent on it was scanning it looking at some data which was just on the bank two sensor i think i just clicked the wrong one actually And essentially the sensor was flatlined, zero volts. Then I stabbed the throttle a few times to see if it would do anything. It didn't. So I went underneath the car and checked the connector just to, I thought maybe possibility it was unplugged or something like that or broken wire, maybe. No broken wire, the connector's connected. It looks okay. Um, so that's where we're at. We have no voltage on this. This is the issue. Should be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to get it up in the air uh, so we can see underneath a bit better. I don't want, really feel like laying on the ground. And um, yeah, we'll have a look. Stay with us. So we're under the car. Bank one, sensor two. Um, sensor one. Sensor two, and I just pulled it off the hunt. So that's all looking all right. I think uh, I can't remember for certain if it's the blue is the signal or the white is the signal, but either way, the two blacks or the two that are the same color are for the heater circuit. So one's a signal and one's a ground. So we'll just look at those two wires and see if we've got anything coming out of them. So we're just looking at our heater, making sure that that's okay. I mean, it was already pretty confident. Um, so we've got 13 volts on one wire. So we just tapped into the, the black one, apologies. And then if we go into the other black one, Again, 13 volts so essentially that's saying that the heat is not being commanded on so we've got voltage coming down going through the heater coil and then back up and then it's not being grounded and controlled at the moment so that's why the, the voltage is the same otherwise you would expect uh, the voltage to be used on the other side so we can say that that's probably okay we could test with a test light but you know there wasn't really a circuit code for the heater um, anyway and if it was a heater issue we would probably be able to get the voltage to um, come up on that one um, so now I just need to probably grab my uh, power probe and grab a, a power source and then we'll just check for the for the ground side and um, yeah we'll go from there I oh know so I've got the power probe hooked into the car and if we just touch onto this, so I'm teed into the white wire and that's showing us that we've got a ground. So hopefully if we go onto the black wire, oh uh, sorry, they're not the black wire, the blue wire, and probably not the best idea to put 12 down, but that's all I sort of wanted to see. So very quick. We put 12 volts, so if you, essentially with the power probe, if you hit that, so that's giving it a ground, that's giving it a power, and that shows 
sorry, apologies. That shows that we were able to get power up there and the ECU can read it. Um, so it looks like this one just needs an oxygen sensor based off that. And um, we'll give the customer a call. Hopefully they want to go ahead and we'll get a sensor in it. We'll sort of go from there. Alrighty, so we've got a um, new sensor. Bosch one, Bosch part number. And we're just gonna screw this one in. So we've already screwed ours out. And then we will start her up after we plug it in. Come on, you bloody thing. After we plug it in, and hopefully, on our scan tool, we've got some voltage. All right, let's start her up. As you can see, cooling temp. I would have thought maybe we would see something already. Hopefully. I might just give it a little rev. Not looking good. Alrighty, well let's have another look at it. I guess I don't understand why what's happened there. Well that was very weird. It took a long time for that sensor to come alive, but essentially I just went back and cleared the codes because I thought that maybe I was wrong. Um, but you could see here, well I can show you I, when I restarted it. Um, actually if I pause it. Pause. If I go back to the start, down here, this was like literally out, I cleared the codes and went back into the data, which I would have thought clearing the codes wouldn't bother it. Um, but essentially, as soon as I cleared the codes, it started coming up in voltage. Um, and then, yeah, essentially, it started hitting the throttle a bit, trying to warm it up because it was starting to climb. It was 100 millivolts here. And then, as soon as I hit the throttle and it woke up. Now it's working and reading. So well, I'm not too sure why it was lazy at the start there. Um, I would th I would have thought that if it had a heater problem, um, like a ground on that because obviously we had the power like I said power coming in through the coil and power going out not being grounded shows voltage on both sides that it would say that we had a you know heat of circuit issue um, but anyway it looks like we're good now we have voltage you know, 740 millivolts is you know around about a good number 
So yeah, PO0136, O2 tensor circuit, Toyota, to Toyota High Ace 2.7. I guess that's that. Thanks for following us, guys. Please consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you got anything out of this. And uh, we'll catch you at the next one. Take care.